Light on, light off. <laughs> Welcome to Over the Years. My name is Tim, and I love vintage items. I hunt for treasures and bring you the ultimate prizes of antiques, collectibles, and vintage decor. Join me, my dukes, my girlfriend Josie, and other guests as we search for history. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? <clears throat> it's your boy Tim from Over the Years, and tonight we are going to show you all how we photograph uranium, Vaseline, glass. Um, it's been a big question. Everybody always wants to know. If you've seen our post on Instagram, we do post a lot of our items that are uranium and Vaseline glass that we sell on Etsy and eBay. So we have an assortment of different kinds of uranium and Vaseline glass. So first what I'm going to do is just go over each item briefly. These are some pieces that have been sitting around that I haven't gotten a chance to list yet. So I figured it would be a good opportunity for me to show you all how I go about handling the various types of uranium and Vaseline glass. So the first thing up is going to be this gorgeous piece. So this is a Fenton piece. If you guys didn't get a chance, make sure you check out our live on Fenton glass. It was a lot of fun. I'll put a link up there in the top of the screen. So this is a Fenton glass um, opalescent green. It's opalescent because it has this right here at the top. It kind of goes into that. Um, this is an opalescent green with a cobalt blue crest. Uh, if you did watch our live on Fenton glass, we explained how they have these different um, pieces where the color on the rim is a different color, and that is what they refer to as a crest. So this is opalescent green with a cobalt blue crest. Um, that might not necessarily be the actual name of the crest, uh, but it's kind of a difficult piece to find the actual name for it. It might be Blue Ridge. Uh, but I'm just going to go with cobalt blue because I didn't feel comfortable matching that with the Blue Ridge crest in the book. Um, and then the pattern of the glass um, is thumbprint. And this is a compote. Um, and it does have the Fenton marking on the bottom. So it isn't necessarily a super old piece, but it is a very unique piece and gorgeous. And so I'll probably list that for about $75. The next piece that we have is another Fenton piece. Um, and you can see, once again, what we discussed, it says hand painted by um, down there. And this is what you call a custard glass. And this is a satin finish on the custard glass. And these are, what is it, pink blossom? Yeah, pink blossom painted on there. And this is a nice little basket. And then we have this right here, just not a maker. Uh, I mean, there is a maker, but obviously this is be super difficult to identify. It's literally just a green bowl. So this is a, the way that I would describe this is a uranium glass condiment dish inlaid in a aluminum um carrying caddy so i guess you would kind of there's no markings anywhere on this but i guess you would just kind of carry mayo condiments in there i mean it could, could be a nut dish also i guess it's a nice detail on that handle yeah it is really cool stuff um so i've sold a bunch of these pieces before um this one i will probably list for thirty dollars the next thing that we have are these two little guys so this is what you call Vaseline glass. Obviously you could tell the difference in the color between this and the green piece that I showed you prior to. Um, both of these are what you call open salts. Um, they are basically salt cellars and they are both made by Central Glass Company. And they originally their the patterns were given numbers as the names. Uh, but this one has a, like an AKA and that is called block and diamond or pressed diamond. And then this one is called leaf and ribbed. So you see it has a leaf right there and then another panel that's just empty. 
Um, both of these will probably sell for about $20 a piece. And they are proper antiques. They are over 100 years old. Those I think were probably made late 1800s, like right, you know, the 1890 to 1900. The next piece up, now this is not necessarily a valuable piece, but this was just given to me. Um, and I thought it would be a good example to show you guys how to photograph these sort of uh, pieces. This is Anchor Hawking and it is called so Spiral Spiral Green by Anchor Hawking. Um, this is a luncheon plate. This is probably worth $5 right now. Uh, this was made late 1920s. But if, if I have a whole bunch of other ones of these plates, and what I usually typically do is just list it as one and then the quantity, and then if somebody wants to buy one, because some people will use these as actual place settings. Uh, this one has a bunch of utensils marks on it, though. So uh, the next piece, I think this is the last piece, is this right here. Now, this is actually really nice. Um, I really like this piece. It's not as valuable. Some of these center handled trays will be a lot more valuable. Uh, this one right here is probably going to be about $40. So the name of this pattern is, what did I say again? What? Banded Rings. Banded by, Rings. Banded Rings by Anchor Hawking. And I really like the detail in the handle. The handle is the Which is part. really nice. And this is a heavy duty piece. But the, I think this is a good selection to show you guys to remind you that every piece of uranium glass is going to photo or Vaseline glass is going to photograph different. Um, the, the different the patterns, the difference in the, the makers of the glass, and how much is in it. Yeah, how much, you know, uranium oxide is actually in there. For those of you that don't know, what happened is that. When these people were making the glass, they would add uranium oxide to the the mixture to obtain these sort of green and yellow colors. And when you put a black light on it, it will shine. Um, I don't know where the black light is. Oh, it'll glow when it's underneath the black light. My black light hasn't been used lately, but you can see they all glow a little bit different. Um, so I'll just remind you that when, when we show you, we're going to take you over to our photo studio and we'll show you guys, <laughs> Such as it is. <laughs> and we'll show you guys how, you know, it really depends on the angles in which you're holding it, your surroundings, you want it to be super dark. Uh, but we'll go over that for you guys in a minute. So stay tuned. sit so that I can get a good uh, view of the what is being photographed so and I'm close to the light yeah what she has is just a typical um, UV LED black light that we got from our local hardware store and we're waiting for the over the years flashlights they'll be coming out soon so as you can see, sometimes you're going to get a little bit of bounce back of the UV light. So what you want to do is when that happens, you just kind of want to adjust the angles in which you hold the flashlight. So sometimes you're going to go straight on. Sometimes you want to go from the side. Um, you'll see it bounce off that white wall. Uh, when the light goes off, you see we get usually about this close. So... To avoid getting that blue light, she'll change positions. There you go. So this is a straight on from above view. As you can see where the flashlight is right there. Straight up above the pieces gives these two pieces the best um, lighting. So what we'll do is, is I'll sit where I'm sitting now in front of it. And I'll take a picture of the piece. So these will actually be taken because they're going to be sold separately. We'll just do one there. So you could see, and then this is, I'll take a picture just like this, light off, and then 
after I take that picture, I'll say light on. Mod Dukes will turn the light on and then I'll sit in the same position when I take the picture so that when I post it on Instagram, I can do a layout of the four pictures together. So that way it looks like when the people are swiping through the pictures, it looks like the same picture side by side. side, by side. So that's how we typically do that. Now these pieces can tend to be a little bit difficult because of the way that it goes straight through to the bottom with not a lot of design on there. And you can see you're going to get a little bit of the bounce back of the UV light on the dishes for certain. Um, but once again, we'll just play with the angle of the flashlight till we get it into a position that we feel it's going to give us the best picture. Are we, are we gonna do light off? Yeah, we're going to do light off. <laughs> Light on, light off. <laughs> light off. All right. So this one is actually not that bad at all. This one glows really beautiful, as you can see. So you really just want to make sure you have complete darkness. This is definitely a two-person job, um, as you can see the way that it takes. But the, the detail that it comes up in these plates when it's on the it's under the UV light is just gorgeous. So then once again, we'll just take the pictures, like, you know, see how those, how the light changes when she moves the flashlight from different angles. Um, it can get really crazy. So like, this is a, side. what you don't want on these side ones, because you see the blue and okay. the purple all over. So once again, it's usually best from the top. Oh yeah. The only time it really works well is if it's a glass. And when you're when you have the glasses, if you go up from the bottom, that works best rather than over the top. Yeah. Break. Let's see. Now with the custard glass, it's always going to be a little bit different too because it's a different type of glow. Um, so you'll notice a difference in it. Sometimes some pieces will glow a lot more. Sometimes they'll glow a lot less. But let's turn the light off. This one has a nice glow to it, as you can see. And usually you'll want to get, what we do is, is we try to get one picture of each side. So like that, we'll rotate and we'll take one with the light on, one with the light off. And then we'll rotate again. And then I'll also get an up close picture like that. Just kind of get some, some different angles so that they can see all the pieces of the the dish. And what we'll do is is I'll show you guys some I'll put pictures in after we Ooh, video look at clip the top each of the one. Handle. Look at the handle. Look at that handle. It's gorgeous. That one glows really nice. I mean, you could see the difference between when the light's on and the light's off. It's just like, it makes no sense to take pictures any other way. And now we're on to this piece. Obviously, this has a different tone of green than the others do. Um, so it will be a little bit different, especially because of the thickness of the glass right down here. It gets really thick, so... Sometimes that helps, sometimes it makes it more difficult to shoot the image. So let's put the light on there. And then we'll do the light off. But look at that. That is gorgeous. So then sometimes I don't mind it when it has this green on the background because I think it adds a little bit of depth to the picture when it's black. Um, the one thing that is difficult with especially the thumbprint portion of this um piece is sometimes it's hard for the detail to come in on the thumbprint but you can see and then when you go up from the top angle with the light it's really just pretty even the though the blue doesn't glow there is blue uranium glass there is pink uranium glass those glasses those colored glasses by certain makers in certain time periods will also glow um, but this is just a really gorgeous piece and then we'll get up here up top when we take the top pictures. It's just a really interesting look. So it's a lot of trial and error. You just want to try to keep 
finding the good angles. So you could see like on this piece right here, like at certain angles, it'll glow really heavily on the top part. But down here is just a very light glow. So you kind of just work around until you find a, a shot that works best for you. Like right there, that's it. Perfect. It all glows. It's a really nice glow, detailed. Even though we got a bit of purple in the back, it's still a good look. Yeah. So like it, it's just it's a lot of trial and error, and you'll get used to it over time. Now this is an interesting piece because it does have this aluminum carrying caddy. So sometimes you'll see that it'll, you're going to get this sort of color right here on the aluminum. Uh, but once the light goes off, you'll see, especially in the pictures, that it's not as bad. So you'll just kind of like, you want to get a picture like this, you know, and then you're going to get a picture up top and you're going to get that purple on there. Like That's just there's nothing you can do about that but it does kind of have a cool look to it then you just kind of want to get the side angles and then you'll turn it around a little bit get it from every angle so they can see um and then maybe like a i'll probably take the caddy down and then you'll still get some of that and then she'll change up the angle of the light to just kind of like mess with it a little bit obviously with that one you'll want to turn the caddy around now you kind of have the whole green in the bowl and you'll see in the pictures the difference the different shots and angles that you want to take to really bring out make your piece look as best as it possibly can and give it the beauty it deserves all right once again we're going to be doing this plate and as you can see these can be very difficult this one is these are surprisingly not as difficult as i thought they would be um the really thin ones and the ones that don't have a lot of the uranium oxide in them can prove to be very difficult sometimes like even if you you might want to try and sit them up if you have like a stand that you could sit them up on just so that you know you can optimize the the glow when you're taking the picture now you can see i mean all the different angles the closer that you get, the more difficult it is to get all of the green. And you'll see, see that it, it gets, but when you back up, you get more like there. That's perfect. You see, it's just a lot of playing around to get that perfect angle. And then obviously, you know, you'll get be able to get close up to a certain extent before you start to cast a shadow. Um, so yeah. Even plates that are super difficult, if you find the right angle, you'll be fine taking the pictures. wraps up another how-to video hopefully we were able to show you guys how we take pictures of uranium glass vaseline glass um, that we use to help sell and promote our items on ebay etsy macari um, just remember black light 
extra set of hands. Shout out to my Dukes. She's always helping me take the pictures of uranium glass and Vaseline glass. Josie also, when my Dukes isn't around, she's always helping. It is definitely a must <laughs> to have two sets of hands to take these pictures. Uh, so black light, two sets of hands, really dark atmosphere, um, and then lighting. Just a lot of lot of angles, trial and error. You know, every piece is going to be different. Don't get discouraged. Just keep trying, and hopefully, you guys are out there finding some Vaseline uranium glass and bringing them back and making some money. Uh, if anybody ever has any questions, don't ever hesitate to hit me up on Instagram or YouTube. I uh, really appreciate all the love and support, and we will see you guys next time. Peace.